Yeah, I'm Raymond here uh, from Koei Tecmo Singapore. This is the Singapore branch of the Japanese studio. Uh, I guess many people will be familiar with games like uh, Dynasty Warriors, Samurai Warriors, and these days we do so much collaboration with other companies too, uh, Hyrule Warriors, uh, One Piece Warriors, etc. But probably a lot of people do not know that we also make social and mobile games as well. Um, <clears throat> we develop and also we operate uh, these games in the Japan market as well as also outside of Japan and North Asia as well in uh, China and in Taiwan. Right. So really today what I hope to share with everyone is really some of the lessons we have learned, uh, some of the you know, mistakes and stuff uh, while we are operating this game. So the context here really is that you have developed the game and you are putting the game into service and uh, yeah, what are the challenges faced? And, and some of this input is not only from our own teams, it's also gleaned from talking to people in the industry, people who have done likewise. And I guess probably among the group of people here, you probably share the same kind of role. So here's really sharing a little bit of experience as to how we've gone about to overcome some of these challenges. Okay, uh, so four key things I'll be talking about. Uh, content, operations, uh, data, and uh, finally, uh, fiscal, right? So, these are the kind of things that will drive you crazy if you don't have a system to take a look at these things and to systematically solve each of these uh, issues. Let me just go into each of these in detail. Okay, content. All right, I think this is pretty common. Right? Uh, you have customers come in, they play your game, and even, however much they may like your game, after a while, they will be bought. Right? Or however interesting they might be, after a while, they will find that, yeah, you know, we are kind of like doing the same thing repetitively and doing it again and again. Uh, and I think one of the key issues, of course, is uh, regards to game balance especially. When you have different users joining into your game at different times, how do you do things, how do you introduce features that will not alienate either existing users or new users coming in? I, th I think these are common problems, right, faced by your customers. And then on the other hand, you know, on the supply side of things, uh, your developers, right, uh, your own team of people as they are churning out stuff, they have put the game into service, uh, and of course, uh, things are not you know, smooth all the time, there are problems, problems to be fixed, they are busy, they have ideas, but they have no time to put this, uh, implement this, and uh, of course, each time around, they are also rushing for major updates too. Right? So how do you balance all this? Right? I think these are some of the things that are regards to content faced by most teams. Uh, in-house, we have this philosophy of uh, really trying to do things uh, in a very regular fashion, trying to do things as frequent as possible in bike size chunks rather than trying to be ambitious. You know, you go to a hotel, you have a buffet, you eat everything there, and then you probably won't go back to eat the same buffet for like, I don't know, half a year or even the same place, right? So rather you want to taste each dish at a time, right? So very much uh, we try to present this to the customers one piece at a time, right? So that there's always something interesting to look forward to. There's always something uh, that, you know, based on the ground of familiarity, moving on to the next thing and to the next thing, right? So that's one in terms of content. The second thing is, I think, in regards to the timing of the contents, uh, rather than keep customers waiting for, oh, when's the next big update or when's the next time you're going to change certain things, right? We try to keep things on a very regular basis every time there's some change. So that the customers will know actually to expect something. Each time they come in, there's going to be something different. Each time they come in, there's going to be something a little bit, you know, not what they've been doing all along, right? So surprise your customers, right? You'll find many a time, right? After you run an event, uh, you go to the forums and you check, customers will have found certain ways, loopholes, balance problems. Uh, they'll talk about it. And it's next similar event that comes about and say, we know how to rig this, we know how to beat this, but guess what? We've changed the rules, right? We've changed, trick a little bit here and there so that everyone would have a fresh chance to start again. Everyone would have a fresh chance at being equal. And that's what will make your customers continue to pay and to play, right? Uh, from the developer's viewpoint, right? I think it's uh, important, right? Uh, In-house, we always try to keep a stock of uh, changes in hand, right? So when we put things into service, minimally, we look ahead at least one to two months, right? If we go into service, we want to make sure we have content that will last us for after service at least one to two months, right? If nothing, if even during those two months you are busy, at least you can still recycle some new stuff during those two, two months itself. Right? So that's, that's very important. A lot of games go into service without considering that point. They go into service and then they find that they're struggling with problems. So they're trying to fix 
existing problems, and then at the same time, they're trying to introduce features and almost impossible tasks. Right? Uh, many a times, say you have, say, five people, seven people, eight people working in a team for a project, and you push it out. That team is going to be very busy. And then where are you going to find the resources and the time to develop? Right? So we probably have to you know, add in more people. But if the game, as you start off, already has imperfections and it's not doing well and probably not making money, uh, justifying that extra cost to go into the team is probably going to be even more difficult. Yeah, so it's always good, right? Before you launch, set expectations right within the team, uh, with your customers too, right? Uh, as in what kind of game to expect. And I think that variation, that change is very important at the onset of the game. Uh, of course, then, uh, you know, thinking about, you know, in-house, we, uh, we always have a calendar, right? We know exactly what we're going to launch, right? Within the game itself, one month down the road, two to three months, maybe some quick lookup, right? Uh, features, whether it be for you know, uh, increasing DAU, whether it be for retention purposes, whether it be for monetization purposes. And at different points in time, uh, there are different purposes, different objectives to achieve. And we keep goals, right? We have certain goals, okay, with this campaign, with this event, we need to reach this. Uh, with that, with that, if we don't reach, why, why not? We question these things. Okay. Uh, balance, of course, as I mentioned earlier, right, is another thing. So you need to have something inside that to think about, okay, uh, subsequently, I'm going to have different classes of users. What do I do about that, right? So again, at the back of our mind, as you're developing again, uh, these are things that you have to consider. Right, and obviously, you can't do everything, right? So you really have to be picky about what you want to do. Okay, next, I want to talk about uh, operational stuff. Uh, I think these are some of the things uh, when uh, things go wrong, right? You have some code that is, uh, you know, results from service being down. Uh, too many people coming into the system, and you haven't managed to have a chance to really test things out, and suddenly the game slows down or totally stops. Um, you know, balance problems, right? Uh, database problems. These are very common. As you go into operation and you, you, you haven't had a chance to really iron these things out, these things happen. And uh, on the other side too, your developers uh, already trying to cope with uh, feature problems, things that might come up, cus customer complaints and stuff, right? I think really, you know, they are getting frustrated and really have to, they may have to work on weekends and stuff. So what, what's the solution to all this? I think being prepared is uh, key, right? Uh, In-house, we, uh, we, we know when the peak periods are going to be. We know when the peak hours, peak days. If there's a festival, uh, event, big event coming up, uh, yeah, we, we plan things a little bit ahead, right? So if it's peak hour at 8 p.m., right, get things ready, right? Murphy's Law, something will go wrong, right? Something goes wrong, at least you still have that three to four hours to react. Uh, you will be able to, you know, you, if there's something go wrong with the system, at least you just apologize to 100 users, compensate 100 users, rather than the 1,000 users that will come in later. Right. Um, <clears throat> weekends, public holidays, you know the crowds are going to come in then, right? So you want to smooth things out. You want to hear from the first users coming in, what's the experience? And then you tweak the balance, the specs, uh, you want to add, you know, more, you know, resources into the service and stuff. That's when you can start to sense, are things working? Are the new features working as well or not? And at that time, right, uh, even if you decide to you know, uh, stop things or suspend certain features, it's still early enough, right? So that, that's important. Uh, when to end is also important. I'll probably talk a little bit about this as well. Uh, yep. And then you get, of course, you understand there'll be problems, especially when you start off the service, uh, your developers, you need to warn them and you need to let them have the expectation that yeah, it's not over. Once you launch it, uh, tons of problems are going to come in. They need to be on standby, they need to be on shift work, etc., etc. Right. So it's only after you have reached a certain degree of stability and then you know, okay, maybe the next big crunch is when you launch the next big update. Ah, that's when you can start to stabilize this and then you can slow down the monitoring, the taking care, uh, what do you call it, the babysitting. Okay. Uh, I was talking about the ending of events, right? Uh, if you have something that ends at, say, 12 midnight, right? Well, good luck to you, right? Something, something happens, that means your developers have to stay until 2 a.m., 3 a.m. to try to fix these things. And users really get very upset because they are going to go to sleep and uh, they want to play the last bit and suddenly the system goes down, right? They're trying to rush for that final objective before the tournament closes and uh, get the last points and then things stop. Right? So that's bad too. So you need to think about these things. You need to plan. Uh, you know, we had bad experiences in the past whereby we, we didn't think of some of these things too. Uh, we planned the events at the end. And at the same time too, someone else, another member of the team was doing analysis of data. They were running log data. They were collecting data also around the same time too, right? And that resulted in the server spike and uh, yeah, things uh, slowed down tremendously. So again, some of these things have to be synchronized, have to be planned, have to be thought through. 
Okay, uh, important of course, right? Your developers, uh, they definitely, definitely have to play their own game, uh, watch the forums, understand what the players are doing. I think usually first signs of trouble are not so much from internal testing, right? If the internal testing were perfect, right, uh, nothing will happen. Right? But the, the real fact is that the players are smart, the players, are, you know, they, they, <laughs> they try different things, and then you get different results. And then the first signs of that appearing it's someone complaining on a forum. And you need to be fast to address that, right? What happened there? What's the issue there? The developers need to be fast to react uh, and try to fix this fast. Okay. There will be times when it's unbearable, right? There will be times when it's like, you know, if we don't fix this now, if we don't stop the service, there are going to be a lot more people affected, a lot more compensation, rewriting databases, re reverting databases. Those are painful things you don't want to do. Right? So you have to make some hard decision, has to be some decision metrics to follow, whereby the top person says, okay, let's call it a stop. Right? We know it's going to stop the money-making machine, but yeah, you know, fixing these problems is important, rather than you, know, you try to compensate later. In-house, you have a practice. Even when customers, right, they lock in later, and then hey, they get this free gift for a reason. Oh, system was down, something happened. Right? Actually, it didn't concern them. They will not play, but we still compensate them. Right? Because uh, it's always good practice to let them know, yeah, we admit it's our problem, right? So we'll try to fix these things, and then we, we are moving ahead and improving. Okay, uh, data, right? This part here. Uh, so you have launched the game, you're operating it, and then, wow, there's lots of data, right? Uh, users play the game, they do all kinds of things, you, keep, you try to keep track of everything, right? And I think at the very top, especially when you start launching a service, uh, the top ones know everything. How's the game doing? And you know, every, every detail from A to Z. So is there a necessity to know everything? Second thing is, uh, you know, you want to know whether people are playing, how long they are playing, whether they are paying, right? At the other end, you have your developers. Uh, they are busy pushing out stuff, fixing problems, and really, data, looking at it, is the last thing on their mind, right? And they will be telling you, like, look, I don't know how to program, right? Data is not my concern. Okay, uh, I think you need to have this philosophy, right? For those of you who study physics, uh, if you try to interfere too much with the process that's happening, you will actually, you, even if you are observing, you introduce elements into it, right? So, uh, yeah, you need to be careful about what you are monitoring, and every little bit of script that collects data, every little script that does a pre nav somewhere, is going to hook up server resources, right? And then you're going to end up with a lot of data, and what are you going to do with that data? So, that, I think that's important, right? You need to plan upfront what data you want to collect, what's the objective, what does that tell you? And along the way, as you find that the data becomes useless, get rid of it, get rid of the tool, something you need, you start to write new tools for that. So that's how in-house we adapt, right? We have certain fixed tools. In-house, then we start to add on tools. But at the same time, too, some tools we realize after a while, well, okay, we roughly know the trend. We know that's not going to change over time. Let's just get rid of it. Once in a while, maybe just run that. Okay, um, yeah, some things to look at, uh, analyze, etc. right? Okay, uh, but not only quantitative data, right? Qualitative data is important. So uh, uh, data is not information, right? So uh, a lot of it, the qualitative feedback actually comes from your customers, right? Your customers uh, out in the forums, talking about things, the chats, uh, your own developers playing. These things, when amal amalgated together, are important. So in-house, we actually have a you know, uh, progress meeting every day, right? Every morning in the morning, we look at the data and say, hey, what's wrong with the game? What did people do yesterday? Uh, was there anything out of the ordinary? Uh, if it's a new event, we analyze the trends and see, okay, are users performing and doing things as what we expected them? If not, why not? Let's try to fix those things. So, so that's important. Uh, we, we don't so much trust the systems. Yes, the systems churn out data, but really you need someone to look at them. And in-house, uh, if you trust just one person to look at that, that one person will not be able to know everything. So uh, in-house, we try to build up this mindset. Data, looking at it, analyzing what's happening in the game is everyone's responsibility. Ultimately, fundamentally, if you are a programmer or designer, right, whatever you do has an impact on the game. You have to understand why yourself, right? Uh, you may develop a feature, but how does what's the causality between that and resulting revenue, right? So in-house, we try to instill this discipline. We want people to understand what they have done results in increase, decrease in sales, and be responsible for that, right? So uh, that's important, and with that, along with that responsibility, therefore, in internally, they will internalize and say, oh, okay, I actually need to look at data. I need to write my own tools. I need to figure out what's wrong with that. And then, they, it will be the responsibility to re report what's happening there. Okay, uh, yeah, like I said, uh, these things, there's no fixed rule. Depends on the project, depends on the title, depends on how different teams do it. But I think, really, your goals should be important to drive what data to collect. Okay, uh, <coughs> haven't spoken so much about content, operational details, and also data, right? But really, 
uh, if you talk about uh, you know many rings and one ring to rule them all, right? Uh, really, down to it is a business, right? Are you are you making enough money, right? So the fiscal part is equally important as well. And probably this is one part whereby teams, especially smaller companies and startups, uh, they start to do. They are focused more on the game, maybe even getting things right in terms of operational and, and content and stuff, right? Uh, but uh, fundamentally, the key purpose is to you know, generate enough sales, generate enough profit, so that your team can continue to churn out good stuff, right? So this is important. And uh, we set goals, right? Uh, much as this sounds like, okay, you know, boring management overhead. Trust me, when you have these things in place, actually it brings comfort to the team, right? Because they know they are getting there, or they know they are not getting there, and they know they are not running around like, like mice in the maze, right? Are we getting there or not, right? Are we meeting the targets? Uh, if not, why not? There are certain benchmarks we try to set. If not, we try to understand why, and then we treat the targets accordingly. So it's important to have a starting point. Uh, what the data does, uh, how does this result in sales, and then we try to then uh, methodically break this down right into uh, you know, what it means for the business. And that's important. Okay, uh, yeah, so we have this whole you know, uh, plan, do, check, action uh, in place. Uh, you need to be able to account for everything, hidden costs and stuff, and then really understand where your project profitability lies. It's not so much an issue about whether your project is making tons of money or not. That's not important. What's important is whether your project is making enough money to cover your cost of development and the running cost. Right? If you have a project that's making a lot of money, well, you think about it, okay, I want to get more users, I can spend more advertising, promotion, put more service into place, put more developers into place. If your, if your product, your line is not making money, then you think, okay, I still want it to make money, maybe not as much, I'll just take, pull out some resources. Right? It's a matter of balance, right? But you need to know, right? That's important. Yeah, I think I've covered that. And uh, yeah, I, I leave you with this kind of like uh, two things here, right? Um, well, you look at it as a Raymond, what, what's the difference, right? Something's wrong if you don't know, if you can't, you can't afford your lunch, and something if you don't know how much your lunch, sorry, Picture <laughs> cost. Okay, how much your lunch costs? Okay. Uh, okay, one is in reality talking about sales and how much resources and funds you have, right? Whether you can afford to invest in the next feature and whether it's uh, you know affordable to keep your team size at that. The second thing is uh, you know uh, yeah how much sales you're making versus how much you how much cost you're incurring. Right? I think that's that's important, right? In fact, if anything. Right, rolling out a game is important, rolling out on time is important, having good quality, customers playing is important, but if you are not managing your finances well, the next thing you know, uh, you're running the rate and then you are, you're trying to understand why. Right? So it's important at onset to set these goals, right? Okay, so uh, yeah, that's a very quick uh, nutshell uh, of what uh, you know, we're trying to you know, uh, do in-house and trying to do well. I'm sure a lot of you will have good experiences uh, yeah, feel free to share. Or if you have questions about this, yeah, just uh, write to me or at this forum here. Yeah, please feel free to ask myself. Thank you. Um, question? Thank you for your presentation. Uh, earlier on, you mentioned that uh, you were trying to encourage um, and create a culture in the company where the entire development team is uh, responsible mm -hmm. for data analytics. Yes, yes. Uh, they are, that shows that they are passionate about the game and they care about the players. So from the management level, how do you go about uh, adjusting the team organizational structure, reporting lines, uh, routine responsibilities in order to encourage uh, uh, data-oriented, data analytics uh, culture? Uh, actually, we kind of do this more informally. So at the team level, when they are meeting out, actually people take turns right, to look at the data. The data is there, right? The tools are there, they collect. Uh, and then they, you know, they start off from the very routine things like, okay, reporting the standard stuff. And we take turns to do that. Right? And once they have that, they understand, they will actually think about what this data actually means. They will prepare for it, for the presentation. And it becomes second nature to them. The next thing will be then, they will start asking themselves what other data we can collect. So that's really the next step we want to encourage. Um, yeah, that, that consciousness is very, very important. But uh, don't, don't you feel that, uh, that some of your team members might be better suited to doing the data analytics or data visualization? How do you, how do you encourage those weaker members uh, to participate as well? Yeah, there will be two kinds of data. So one on a more operational basis, the one I was talking about is more operational. The other will be more on a strategic basis, right? Really looking at the game. Uh, for example, if you want to analyze uh, retention rates, right? Uh, 
how well is the game reta uh, retaining. You, know, you probably want to do some cohort analysis. Ah, that one would be part of a bigger project whereby someone would be uh, who is a little bit more keen, right? Among the group, after a while, you see there are someone who is more interested, who is interested in these tools, who is interested in finding out the, the answers to some of these things, right? And they really want to fix these problems. Yeah. Then we encourage these people to, you know, say, okay, here's the direction. Here's the here's what really here's the question. We are not even sure of the question, right? Figure out the question, and then figure out what might be the answer to these things and what might be the solutions to these things. Yeah. Thank you. Have a other question? Uh, I think this is uh, mostly on the operation time, right? Uh, how about the development time when uh, your team um, feel that, that the game is not fun enough? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. Ah, I see. Okay. Thanks for the question. Uh, actually, it's not so much even the team. Uh, we have an in-house process, right, whereby the game goes through from concept to beta to pro uh, pre-release. Uh, different stages of uh, quality checks. Like so first on the paper, then later in the prototype stage, in the pre-release uh, monitor room and stuff. And even all the way up to the top level whereby the producers and uh, other producers play the game and they comment. And they have to hit some minimum score, some minimum standard before we release the game. Yeah, it's a painful process, but it's a necessary one. Rather than launching a game that it's, you know it's not going to make it, right? Uh, then we have to make some decisions. Uh, is the fix going to take one month, two months, half a year, and then we might then decide and say, okay, this is not going to make the cut. We will cut it, <laughs> right? Uh, but uh, if we know, yeah, it's just a little bit more effort, uh, then it's worthwhile definitely to concentrate on this. The last thing you want is to launch a game that's half there, you get terrible DAUs, you know pumping in more money into advertising is not going to work. Yeah, that's the last thing you want. One more question? No? I think that was clear. Thank you very much. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you very much. Bye. Yep.